thing. Ow, that, that hurt. Oh, hold on. That's better. But I... Yes! So I have the AMC A-List, and what that is is a monthly subscription service, wherein for $19.95 a month, I get three free movie tickets a week, and from December 2018 to March 2020, I saw 177 showings in a 66-week period of time. Then the pandemic screwed all of that up for me, but now theaters are open and I'm trying to watch new movies again. So now it's time once again for some more uh, drop in the microphone, not cool, uh, up-to-date movie reviews. Really need to do the hand slapping part there. Otherwise, what's this segment for? Uh, with Steve Stubbs of the Week. Da -da -da -da. So, thank you. That was really good. So this installment of Steve Stubbs covers my 18th week back in theater since the pandemic done messed everything up. And in that time, I have seen 31 movies in theaters. I only ended up seeing one movie in theaters this week, but we'll get to that. This week, I saw Shang-Chi again for like the third time. But this time, I took a 16-year-old with me, and that changes everything. Okay. Uh, but I also want to talk a little bit about Dune, which I was going to see but didn't, but we'll get to that. So first, let me, let's discuss the movie that was not seen in theaters. Dune, the new Dune, all new extra Dune-y Dune. Now with even more Dune, it's Dune. So I was, I was going to see this. I had tickets to go see it on Thursday, but uh, I live in a... I, I want to talk more about this at length. I'm going to talk more about this during Funny Verses, which is our freeform segment where we can talk about whatever we want. But uh, I live in a small town in the Midwest. I'm in the Bible Belt. I'm in the middle of nowhere, a very small conservative town, mostly whites. And Halloween is today at the time we're recording this, which is a Sunday. So uh, I realized on Wednesday, that Halloween this year isn't on Halloween. Okay. There is no trick-or-treating allowed today. The, the city came out and said, uh, this year's trick-or-treating will be on Saturday from 5 to 8. Because, oh of course, we're not going to have Halloween on Halloween because of Jesus. Seriously? Yeah, so I'm like, shit, uh, the kids won't be able to Halloween on Halloween. I need to come up with a, a, a bunch of other shit to do. So I found a thing to do, on two things to do on Thursday, one thing to do on Friday, two things to do on Saturday, and then trick-or-treating. And then on Sunday, we can hang out, carve pumpkins, watch uh, Halloween stuff. I, I got sick and tired of SNL running the same Halloween uh, best of. So I made a two-hour best of of my own. Yeah. It took me like six hours to render, but it was worth it. I've got, I've got such a better Saturday Night Live Halloween special than Saturday Night Live has right now. But that's beside the point. So on Thursday, we went and did two activities with the kids, and so I foregoed going to see Dude. But I, I didn't have a problem with that, and I'll tell you why. My main movie this week is going to see Shang-Chi for the third time, but I went to go see it with my 16-year-old high schooler, Mao, and we're there, and we're in the smallest theater. There's only six rows in the entire theater, and this is the small theater where they show films that are about a week away from disappearing in theaters. Okay. And sure enough, Shang-Chi is going to be available to download in like two weeks, I think. So uh, Shang-Chi was leaving. So we were in the tiniest movie theater in the freaking world, and it's just the both of us. There's no other people in the theater. So we're just talking through the whole movie, and it's awesome. Uh, but, but a preview comes on for Dune, and I'm like, ooh, I have tickets to go see this on Thursday. And Mal looks at it, and Mal uh, just instinctively goes, Oh shit, is this a new Star Wars? And I go, actually, no, it's not a Star Wars. 
it's it's Dune. And and Mal says, no, I, I know it's not Star Wars, but is this a Star Wars? Is this just because this seems to me like just some other company saying, hey, we need to make our own fucking Star Wars. Let's pick this thing. And I told Mal that, like, I don't know if this is a Star Wars, but I will tell you that um, this Dune movie is based on half of the first book in, like, a 60 freaking book series. Yeah. So Mal, without knowing that much about Star Wars and that much about Dune, correctly said, oh, then this is just some other studio saying, hey, we can do a Star Wars, and this is going to be their Star Wars. Fuck Dune. And so the closer I got to Thursday, the more I kept thinking about what my 16-year-old said and kept thinking, shit, I got to go see Dune on Thursday. Eh, Fucking Mal was right. It's just a Star Wars. I don't fucking want to see this. So when I realized that Halloween wasn't on Halloween, I'm like, hey, I've got two things we can do for the kids on Thursday night. How about we go do those? I don't have to go see Dune. Aw, shot. So it really cheered me up when you messaged me and said, hey, uh, fuck, what, I want to get it specific. I want to get specifically what you said. Wow, it's amazing how Dune is exactly like Star Wars. Watching Dune now, not impressed. So I didn't go see Dune, but you did. Bunny, what are your thoughts? Tossing it over to wow. you. Wow, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure where... Okay, well, first off... We turned it off. First off, Jeannie and off... You just stepped on my joke just that sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeannie and I got invited to the White House by Joe Biden, and we were going to see it in the, in the White House theater, and they started playing Dune, and I thought, fuck this administration. You know? Uh... First off, the the media around Dune, my fucking Christ, are they ever trying to hard sell this fucking movie? Oh you know? hell yeah! Oh from, hell yeah! From this one saying, you know, from getting their stars out saying, oh, oh well, this is going to be the greatest science fiction movie. Uh, <laughs> to to some of the most recently, it's like this movie is this movie is just like Star Wars. Yeah, and some ad is saying that now. Like, like why? Because it has a sand planet? Is that really all it takes? And, and like, what makes you think that that is good advertisement? I mean, I would think that you're going for the people who have read and enjoyed the book. You know? No. Because I, I don't think you could possibly be going for the fans of the first two shit-ass Dune movies. Okay? Yeah. So telling somebody who read and loves the book Dune that it's just like Star Wars... That's going to turn off the people that are Dune fans. And there's some hardcore fans of that book. Of course there's going to be. There's like 300 books in the goddamn series. Yeah, it's it's like I I yeah. so I don't know what you're going for with this. Now for the movie, oh oh, the other big hype, you you really need to see it on a big screen, which uh, is like uh, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> you know yeah, you probably should, cause it is a pretty movie, but that still doesn't make it a good movie. Yeah. You know? I'm gonna see it on my. I'm gonna see it on my phone just on general principles. This tiny little. Yeah. Uh, you broke up just a little there. But but then yeah. on on top of that, okay. So the biggest problem with making Dune a movie is that Dune is a very very complex book. With Christ, yeah. like, every letter of the alphabet plot going on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's got a J plot line, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 
So trying to make it into a movie is very, very hard. So they, for this movie, cut out a lot of shit, which I'm not bitching about. When it comes to a movie, I'm, I don't get to be like a purist about the book or anything, you know? Yeah. You have different considerations when you're making a movie than when you're making a book. So you, they cut the book in half, and only did half of the book, that's fine. They completely cut the Fade character, the Sting character, from the movie, that's fine. Aww. They cut the Ben Felix, they cut the Axians, they cut the Land Shred, they've cut the Grange. This is all fine. Okay? But in cutting all of that, they did not make the rest of the movie that they were actually doing <clears throat> any more fucking coherent. Yeah. Okay, you just saved all this time. Maybe you can flesh out the plot a little more so it's completely understandable. I was sitting there watching it like... I, I And Jeannie was watching it with me. I was like, I do not know how anybody who has not read the book has any idea what's going on in the movie. And Jeannie said, well, no, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> you know? What is going on yeah. <clears throat> so how do you cut that much out of the story? And it was fucking sad, because like I could see some of the actors trying yeah. to get the point of the scene across, but they really needed help. Like, the whole fight scene in the beginning with Paul and Gurney Halleck. They didn't tell us, they didn't impress on the audience the danger that they were going into going into Dune. Yeah. You know, and, and why these two who, who are ordinarily very friendly, and now Gurney Halleck is acting like he's going to kill him. They don't explain any of that. Josh Brolin tried to get a <clears throat> bit of... You know, you could see him trying trying to get it across in the acting, but it just wasn't happening. Yeah. And then, uh... This fucking kid, man... I mean, I... I, I hope it's not the kid. I hope it's a shitty-ass actor. First off... I see definitely we are in the waifish young boy fashion stage. Yes. This seems to be now the thing. I'm going to blame the kid from Stranger Things about that. Uh, but this kid no, has no, got zero fucking charisma. Yeah. At all. I'm not so a big like fan. So like the other of actors are trying that. to act around him. Yeah. And you can easily take him out of the scene and put in a tripod. <laughs> and they can act around the tripod, and it would be about the same. He was fucking awful. And the same thing, it was like, it was like he's talking to Duncan Idaho, who's being played by Jason Momoa. Yeah. And the thing in the book is that Duncan... Duncan Idaho was basically Paul's best friend. He was kind of like an older brother that Paul didn't have. You know, they yeah. had a very close personal relationship, whereas all of Paul's other relationships are kind of political. You know? Yeah. And, and, and then... On a second level, narratively, Duncan Idaho was another uh, another part of Paul, and is the part of Paul that leaked yeah. out in the other books. But that's besides the point. <clears throat> like nothing. Like I'm, and again the same thing. I'm seeing Jason Momoa try to play this kind of more big brother character, but, like, he's getting no help from the fucking kid. And it's just not coming off. Yeah. 
So they have a conversation, and you're not damn sure what they have about it. And they stand around so a lot a and show you pretty scenery. As opposed to telling you what's going on in the story. Yeah. So no, not a fan. And I'm gonna be then I'm then I'm gonna be completely lost because I, I haven't I haven't read any of those goddamn three trillion books. I was gonna Halloween it. So I was going to watch the original Dune, then watch that documentary about what Jodorowsky's Dune was going to be. And then I found this guy on YouTube that chronicled the convoluted history, the timeline of the Dune book series, and I was going to watch that. And then I was going to go watch the new Dune, but eventually it's just a, you know, my small ass town isn't doing Halloween on Halloween because of Jesus, so I, I needed to sacrifice Dune in order to go out with my kids, and I was fine with that, and I'm not that excited about going to see Go, going to see Dune again, you know? No. Not excited about that opportunity. I already have my movies lined up for next week, and it, one of them is not Dune. So. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. Uh, save, save, save Dune for when you are feeling more self-destructive. When you're feeling really down about yourself, and you think you're going to do something to, to hurt yourself because you're in that really dark place, give Dune a watch. Oh, okay. Give Dune a watch. I, I mean, you know, I like that it's, now, it's but... safer than a lot of the other things that you could do, and, and you'll have the same regret and loathing and, you know... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I gotcha. Okay, so It'll that's... satisfy the need with no real harm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's Doom. Uh, the Steve Stubbs pick of the week this week is Shang-Chi and the legend of the shang chi Shang-Chi who shangs and also chis. I saw that this week in theaters. I went to go and see it with my 16-year-old Mal. And I was really proud because you can tell when Mal really starts getting into something when they start talking to themselves exasperatedly about something. Like they're watching yeah. something and it'll be like, hmm, okay, hmm, yeah, hmm, i to check my phone really quick, hmm, yeah, okay. But you know when Mal's getting into something when, when they're watching something and they go, okay, 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 okay. Fucking, okay. Oh, you mean to tell me, why didn't you just fucking, okay, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> and so we were sitting there and we're watching Shang-Chi and then like a half hour into it, they're just like, oh my God, his dad is a fucking asshole. Okay, talk about, talk about family trauma, shit. And it's like, ooh, this is, it. they've gotten into it now. Hooray, it worked. The film took, but it's it's really great because because we went to the movies and we went to the the smallest theater there and we went on a Monday, which is the best time to see a movie if you don't want crowds because no one goes to movies on Monday. The only difficult part about going to see a movie on a Monday evening is uh, the employees get really upset that they have to keep the movie op the entire movie theater open. For the six people who showed up to the movies, one of which is you. Yeah. So that's the only negative part. You get a lot of attitude <laughs> when you go to the last showing of a movie on Monday. But it's great because there is no one in the theater. So we were just chilling and hanging out and, and watching the movie. And we were riffing on it. And it was a whole bunch of fun. It was just fun. To, it was fun to watch a film and to be able to sort of rip on it and, and riff on it. Literally, the first 10 minutes of Shang-Chi is Shang-Chi let me your mother explain to you the delightful story of how I fell in love with a mass fucking murderer yeah. I, saw, I saw the goodness in your 1000 year old mass murdering father 
Yeah. And it's like, fuck, dude. Like, I, I know Shang-Chi is a hero, and I know that uh, his dad is the bad guy, but you know who else is kind of the bad guy? The fucking mom. Yeah. Who, who, and she's from, she's from this alternate dimension full of uh, mystical monsters and magic, and there's a, there's a barrier between these two realms, and she was guarding it, and then she met a mass-murdering fuckhead and said, I'm going to leave my world of magic to be with this mass fucking murderer. And you're supposed to feel really bad when she dies and that causes Shang-Chi to become a good guy. But it's like, no, you did a bad fucking thing, dead mom. Yes. Why the fuck did you give up your realm of, your world of magic and wonder and dragons to be with a literal 1,000-year-old man that has killed millions of fucking people. The fuck is wrong with you? This is not covered in the film. The, the hero's dead mom is a bad guy, too. The way that I yeah. see it. But anyway, I'm really excited for Shang-Chi to come out, uh, you know, where you can see it at your home. I want more people to see it. Because Infinity War was this serious film. Yeah. And, and it was serious, <coughs> and it was dour, and it featured our heroes losing. And that led up to Avengers Endgame which was this big, massive, epic, like, life-changing event. The event movie of the decade of the yeah. century. Everyone needs to see Endgame. And then after that was Black Widow. Okay, this should have come out ten years ago, but fucking fine. And then Shang-Chi finally feels like, okay... This is what Marvel movies used to be like in the before times in the long, long ago, where this is just dumb, stupid fun, and I like it, and I like the characters, and yeah. I like the world that they're building, and there are funny parts, and there's good action sequences, and it's just fucking fun again. It just seems as if, you know, it, like, Shang-Chi, hey, this is what Marvel movies used to be, dumb and fun, and you could go see them and have a blast. I don't think that's Eternals. No. Shang-Chi is like, oh, this is how it felt like to go see Avengers for the first time. Or fucking Civil War. Or Ant-Man. You know, just, just oh, dumb Ant -Man. fun. I Thor love Ragnarok. Ant -Man. Yeah. I love Thor Ant -Man. Ragnarok. This, this, is, this is how it feels. You know, this is funny and stupid, and I love it, and there's action sequences. And you wonder, oh, why is this happening? But then you're like, no, it doesn't matter. This is just a, this is just a fun uh, Marvel movie. But I, I'm just really worried that it's in between two really bizarre films. Because Black Widow is a fine family drama, but I don't think it's an exciting comic book movie. And it should have come out a goddamn decade ago. My internet connection isn't unstable. Your, th this whole system's internet is unstable. Fuck off. Um, and then The Eternals, I don't know. The Eternals seems like a comic book movie that wants an Oscar. Yeah. You know? And it's like, I want to see a fun, dumb comic book movie. I, no I offense. Have, I haven't no seen off anything about The Eternals that looks like any fucking fun. Yeah. It... It seems a bit too serious for me. Yeah. But, whatever, I'm seeing that next week, so we'll... <laughs> Our next Steve Stubbs, we'll be getting to the bottom of the Eternals. It, it, but, needs, it needs a raccoon with a gun. Yeah. Yeah. It needs uh, uh, Taika Waititi yes. to come in and, and straighten us all out. talk about that That's what it means. Funny verses. Okay, well, let's move on the, to the there now, because I think... Just this... to, before we leave here, though, the other thing is about just Marvel movies in general that I'm really yeah. getting tired of. Like, pick something. Pick anything. Pick anything at all. And I could tell you what all the talk about the Marvel Universe will be. You know, like, 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 
That 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 guy from the New Horde <laughs> show and Bosom Buddies died. Peter Scolari. Yep. This may be the entrance of mutants into the Marvel universe. Hmm. And is Mephisto behind it? I I this, kept pissing off Peter Malibu. Scolari's death is going to change the Marvel universe completely. I kept pissing off Mal at the movies because. You can kind of sort of see Mephisto being the bad guy in Shang-Chi. Yeah. Uh, and I still think that it might, it might be hinting at Shang-Chi and, and Mephisto being... It, it, it probably isn't because everyone's seeing Mephisto everywhere in the goddamn MCU, but you can look at Shang-Chi and say, hey... I think the bad guy in it might be Mephisto, it, it is all I'm saying. It yeah. probably isn't, but throughout the entire film, I'm just like, hey, so the bad guy's being whispered to by some sort of a presence. You know what that presence could be? Mephisto to MCU confirm. You know, whatever happens, and it's like, oh, we are the guardians of the barrier between this world and the dark world. Oh, Mal, I wonder who is uh, in charge of the Dark World, Mephisto, to MCU confirmed. It just every, every time. And not, they not started even, getting really pissed off. Not even every movie. At this point, it is every offering of Marvel. It is yes. every episode of What If. Every, every. It is every. It, it, uh, you're even hearing talks about it with Hawkeye, where yeah, and and it's the same shit. Is this going to be the entrance of mutants into the Marvel universe? Alternately, is this going to be the entrance of the Fantastic Four into the Marvel universe? Is Mephisto yeah, everyone, Hawkeye, and and this is going to completely change the Marvel universe. Yeah, uh, but I gotta say, uh. I still think that there's a possibility that Mephisto might have been uh, responsible for everything that happened in Shang-Chi and okay, the Shang-Chi of the Shang-Chi. That's a different but, matter because I have not heard you say that about every fucking thing else. I know, I know, You've I know. You've picked one thing and you're saying, okay, maybe this one. But it's still, I think maybe this one, Shang-Chi. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> I'm just saying, it might happen. Anyway, that's it for Steve Stubbs this week. Next week, I'm going to see Edgar Wright's new film, Last Night in Soho, as well as The Eternals. Maybe a third one if I can squeeze it in. Who knows? But join us next week for some more up-to-date movie reviews with Steve Stubbs of the Week. And cut.